Before we get into this lesson, I just want to say this new story has a lot to do with religion. And as a teacher for 20 years, I have had students of all different types of religions, Christians, Muslims, Jews. And I have found that most people from these religions want peace. Luckily, in this new story, the reporters never refer to this man as a Muslim. This person wanted to kill people who were Jewish, but some people might watch this story, hear about where he's from, hear his name, and think that he is Muslim. Just to be clear, the Muslims I know would never do something like this. Let's get into this new story that I hope will help you with your English. Watching the news in English is a great way to improve your English. Unfortunately, the news often uses really difficult vocabulary words, but don't worry. In today's English lesson, we will look at a news clip and we will talk about all of those difficult phrasal verbs, idioms, advanced vocabulary you might see on the IELTS or TOEFL exam. In today's clip, you are going to see a story about a man who wanted to do a lot of bad things in New York City to people who are Jewish. Thankfully, spoiler alert, he was caught and could not do those bad things. Let's take a look at the clip and we'll come back and talk about it. But we're going to begin with some breaking news, and it is most disturbing and frightening. A man busted by officials who say he was planning to target and kill Jews in New York City. First word they used that might have been difficult is disturbing. What does disturbing mean? It means something that makes you feel upset or worried. The news about the planned attack was very disturbing to many people. Thankfully, the man was busted before he could do any damage. What does busted mean? Caught by the police or in trouble for doing something wrong. The man was busted at the Canadian border trying to enter the U.S. But we're going to begin with some breaking news, and it is most disturbing and frightening. A man busted by officials who say he was planning to target and kill Jews in New York City. The alleged plot timed for the upcoming Jewish holidays next month. I would assume reporter Josh Heinegger is in the newsroom with the breaking story. Josh. It was the upcoming High Holy Days and also the upcoming one year anniversary of the October 7th Hamas massacre. This word is so important when watching the news. We are going to talk about it twice, but we'll use it in two different ways. The first way is alleged, alleged. In the United States, when someone is accused of a crime, they are always not guilty. Or we use the term presumed innocent, meaning like we just think they didn't do it until they go to trial and it's proven. So alleged means accused of doing something wrong, but not proven yet. Everyone accused of a crime is presumed innocent before being proven guilty. The man allegedly planned to attack a Jewish center in New York. Alleged, allegedly. Don't worry, we'll talk about it one more time a little later. I holy days. What does that mean? Important religious holidays for Jewish people. The suspect wanted to time his attack during the Jewish high holidays. Let's look at this paragraph that talks about those Jewish high holy days. The Jewish high holy days are a special and important time in the Jewish religion. They begin with Rosh Hashan, the Jewish New Year, and end with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. I am going to simply talk about what atonement means in English, and then we will read about it. But atonement means you've done bad things, you say you're sorry for those bad things, and try to never do them again. Back to the paragraph. During these days, Jewish people reflect on their actions from the past, ask for forgiveness, and make promises to be better in the future. Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year and is often spent fasting 
and praying. Just in case you don't know what fasting means in English, that means to go without eating food. A lot of Muslims fast during the month of Ramadan. Christians also will fast. They might fast on Good Friday or during Lent. Back to the paragraph right after fasting and praying, the final sentence. These holidays are a time for both celebration and serious reflection for Jewish people around the world. If you are enjoying this English lesson, would you mind hitting that like button? And if this is your first time here, please subscribe so you never miss another English lesson. Now back to the clip, and when we come back, we will talk about a horrible word, massacre. But we're going to begin with some breaking news, and it is most disturbing and frightening. A man busted by officials who say he was planning to target and kill Jews in New York City. The alleged plot timed for the upcoming Jewish holidays next month. I would assume reporter Josh Einiger is in the newsroom with the breaking story. Josh. Well, is the upcoming High Holy Days and also the upcoming one-year anniversary of the October 7th Hamas massacre in Israel. According to the criminal complaint, Mohammed Shazeb Khan planned to inflict maximum harm on Jews here in New York. Yeah, I will make that picture a little bigger. It looks like a lot of tombstones or grave sites are in that picture. There are probably many people buried under those tombstones. Massacre in English means a brutal and violent killing of many people. Thankfully, here's a sentence. The authorities stopped a potential massacre that could have happened in new york potential it just means like it could have happened if you keep studying english every day you have the potential to be really good but guess what if you understand most of what i'm saying now you are already really good inflict another word that i don't really like it means to cause harm or damage. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but in that picture is a cigarette. There's a good chance if you smoke, you will inflict harm on yourself. You will inflict harm on your body, probably your lungs. Here's a sentence that uses inflict. He wanted to inflict harm on Jewish people during his attack. Maximum, maximum like the most. Maximum means the largest or highest possible amount. If convicted, meaning if this guy is found guilty, if convicted, he could face a maximum of 20 years in prison. Yeah, he didn't kill anybody. He just wanted to kill people. And that could land him in jail for up to 20 years. This is the upcoming High Holy Days and also the upcoming one year anniversary of the October 7th Hamas massacre in Israel. According to the criminal complaint, Mohammed Shazeb Khan planned to inflict maximum harm on Jews here in New York. In parts of Brooklyn sit some of the most densely populated Hasidic Jewish communities on the planet. The news reporters mention densely populated. What does that mean in English? An area with a lot of people living close together. The attack was planned in a densely populated part of Brooklyn. Brooklyn is what we call a borough of New York City. In other words, it's like a large neighborhood of New York City. The opposite of densely populated is sparsely populated. Here is a trivia question. Do you know the most sparsely populated country in the world? I'll give you five seconds to think. Five, four, three, two, one. That country is Greenland. Or at least we call it Greenland in English. Yeah, it's Greenland. That's how we spell it in English. Not Greenland. That's how it's spelled, but we pronounce it Greenland. Second most sparsely populated country in the world? 
That would be Mongolia. According to the criminal complaint, Mohammed Shazeb Khan planned to inflict maximum harm on Jews here in New York. In parts of Brooklyn sits some of the most densely populated Hasidic Jewish communities on the planet. The news clip also mentions Hasidic Jews. What are Hasidic Jews? Group of Jewish people who follow strict religious customs. Hasidic Jews who are men will often have these curls right here on the side of their head hanging down. And in English, probably Hebrew too, we call them peos. Let's look at a sentence using Hasidic Jews. He specifically targeted Hasidic Jews in his plan. If you're not sure of what specifically means, don't worry. We will talk about it a little later. But we're going to begin with some breaking news, and it is most disturbing and frightening. A man busted by officials who say he was planning to target and kill Jews in New York City. The alleged plot timed for the upcoming Jewish holidays next month. According to the criminal complaint, Mohammed Shazeb Khan planned to inflict maximum harm on Jews here in New York. In parts of Brooklyn sits some of the most densely populated Hasidic Jewish communities on the planet. Communities where tonight people are walking to Friday night services under the watchful eye of law enforcement, which has already deployed its holiday staffing for extra security. Watchful eye is next. What is a watchful eye? Well, that picture will help you. Paying careful attention to something. The authorities kept a watchful eye on his online activities. Parents should keep a watchful eye on their young children. Deployed, that means sent to a place for a special purpose, like soldiers or police officers. We can also use the verb deployed when it comes to jumping out of an airplane. That red thing in the picture is called a parachute. And shortly after a person jumps out of an airplane, they will deploy their parachute, meaning it will open. Here is a sentence using deployed. Police were deployed to the area to ensure safety. Communities where tonight people are walking to Friday night services under the watchful eye of law enforcement, which has already deployed its holiday staffing for extra security. According to a federal complaint unsealed this afternoon, Khan, a 20-year-old Pakistani citizen living in Canada, had reposted an ISIS propaganda online, attracting the attention of undercover law enforcement agents with whom he allegedly plotted to come to New York and attack crowds of Hasidic Jews. Unsealed. I think first we should talk about what a seal is. In the picture, there is a seal on that envelope. That little red circle thing is a seal, so nobody can open it. Or if you open it, you know that it has been opened because that seal has been broken. Be careful. We also have another type of seal. It's a type of animal. When you see un at the beginning of a word, it means not. So unsealed literally means not sealed. But what's the official definition? Made public or opened, especially in a legal case. The court unsealed the documents that explained the charges against him. Some things are not made public, so they stay sealed but when they are unsealed, they are opened to the public. Reposted. You will hear this a lot when it comes to social media. Like after I am done recording and editing this video, I will post it on YouTube. When you see re in front of a word, that means again. The official definition of reposted means shared something again online. The man reposted violent messages from Islamic State on social media. Again, just my opinion, and I don't often add my opinion to these English lessons, but if something is from the Islamic State, I know it has Islam in the title, but I don't think most Muslims 
believe in this stuff. According to a federal complaint unsealed this afternoon, Khan, a 20-year-old Pakistani citizen living in Canada, had reposted an ISIS propaganda online, attracting the attention of undercover law enforcement agents with whom he allegedly plotted to come to New York and attack crowds of Hasidic Jews, specifically either on October 7th, the anniversary of the Hamas attack, or October 11th, which is Yom Kippur, the holiest day on the jewish calendar propaganda it can be a very difficult term i teach this in my classroom and it often takes weeks to teach this but let's try it here in a shorter lesson propaganda what does that mean information that tries to make people believe something but doesn't tell the whole truth. During World War II, the US government used propaganda to try to make people enlist in the army. Posters like this, Uncle Sam wants you. Here is an example sentence using propaganda. He shared propaganda from the Islamic State to gain support for his plans. Undercover. What if I told you the people in the picture were actually police, but they were undercover. What does undercover mean? Working secretly. Police officers do this pretending to be somebody else. They might be more likely to capture a criminal if they don't look like police officers, if they are working undercover. The man discussed his plans with undercover officers who pretended to be his friends. Had reposted an ISIS propaganda online, attracting the attention of undercover law enforcement agents with whom he allegedly plotted to come to New York and attack crowds of Hasidic Jews. All right, we are back to allegedly. We talked about alleged earlier. It might be helpful to watch this English lesson two or three times. When you re-watch the English lesson, you will have already heard some of these words before. It just makes it a little easier. Allegedly, something that is claimed to be true, but hasn't been proven yet. He allegedly shared photos of the place where he wanted to carry out the attack. Carry out. An English phrasal verb in that sentence. Tricky, tricky. Had reposted an ISIS propaganda online, attracting the attention of undercover law enforcement agents with whom he allegedly plotted to come to New York and attack crowds of Hasidic Jews, specifically either on October 7th, the anniversary of the Hamas attack, or October 11th, which is Yom Kippur, the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. Specifically, specifically, there is an S in front of that word. A lot of native English speakers pronounce this wrong. Specifically, referring to something in a detailed or exact way. I live in the United States. Specifically, I live in the state of Maine. He specifically targeted a Jewish community center in Brooklyn. Yom Kippur. We talked about this holiday earlier. It is one of the most important Jewish holidays known as the Day of Atonement. Hopefully you remember what atonement means in English. He considered launching the attack on Yom Kippur, a sacred day for Jewish people. I hope after watching this English lesson once or twice, maybe three times, your English is better. If you're still not done, Improving your English right down there is five hours of English lessons just like this. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.